Good morning. Good morning. I'll read you one verse here, and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get into the message. This is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, and verse 18. The Bible says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you, God, for the opportunity, Lord, you give us to stand once again and look into your word. I pray, Father, as we open this word, Lord, that you would be the one who would come and deliver the message. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to remove myself and speak only that that you would have me to speak. I pray, God, that you would open the hearts and minds of those that are gathered here and those that may hear this in some other way, that you would give them that that they need, Lord, that you would plant within them the word that you would have them to receive. Now we ask as we go forward, Lord, that you would just be in total control, that everything would be according to your purposes and for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll read that again. The Bible says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, I've heard this scripture many times over my life. You probably have heard it too. I've heard it preached in different ways. Most of the time, the way I hear this, people will use this to motivate people. People will use this to get people to grab onto something that they have in mind. I'll give you an example. I heard a man use this. He preached the message about without a vision, people perish. His vision was he wanted a new sanctuary. He wanted a bigger church. He wanted some uh, fancy accoutrements and all that stuff. And he was trying to get the people to get a hold of this vision that he had so that they would give their money so that they could build this bigger building, so that they could have this fancier place. And I've heard that kind of thing go on in different ways that people use this. But let's look at this and let's see what the Bible has to really tell us what he is really trying to say here. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now when Solomon wrote this, he wasn't going off on different tangents. He wasn't talking about, uh, there goes the dog, looks I'm on a bowl of cereal. He wasn't going from one extreme to another. The things that he's talking about go together. He said, where there's no vision, people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Let's take a look at what he's really saying, where there is no vision. What is it that gives us vision? It is the word of God. What is it that enables us to see? It is the word of God. Jesus himself said in one place, seeing they see not. They didn't have any vision. They were blinded. You can go through the Word and you can read time and time again different things that He said about it. The God of this world has blinded them. Without the light of Christ in our life, we are blinded. That's what He's talking about here, where there is no vision, where you cannot see, where you cannot see as God wants you to see, where you cannot perceive what it is that God's saying. And we're living in a time and we're living in a place where that's going on all over the place where people are not perceiving. They don't have a vision. Let me read you something else to tie into this. This is in the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. The Bible says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And that's where we got today. How, how can I say that there's church after church after church? You can't go out here and throw a rock without hitting another church. You can go on your TV and channel after channel after channel after channel. You can hear preachers and you can hear teachers and you can see religious programming. But well, I believe that we're in that time that he was talking about where there's a famine for the word of God. Just because they're opening a Bible, just because they're standing in front of a church doesn't mean they're presenting the word of God. There is no vision. There is no perception. They are presenting something that is not the word of God. They are presenting something entirely different than the word of God. And even sitting in churches like this one and other churches around about us, even though the word is going forward, there are people sitting in a congregation that don't have a vision, that don't have a perception, that are not seeing what is going on. Uh, uh, there's an eye disease called glaucoma, and as you get that, your vision narrows, and it gets narrower, and it gets narrower, until you can just see a little spot. You can't see everything, and religiously speaking, that's where a lot of us are today. That's where a lot of the churches are today. That's where a lot of people sitting in the pews are today. 
They're not seeing the big picture. They're not getting it all. They just got this narrow vision. It's the way that I think it is. It's the way that my pastor says it is. It's the way that I was taught when I was growing up. We're not seeing what it is that God has to say. We're not getting the whole picture. You know, there's scripture that says, when you should be eating meat, I still have to give you milk because you're not able to bear the meat. And that's the problem in a lot of churches today. That's a problem with a lot of the Christians today. People that have been Christian for year after year after year, if they were never given the meat, they're still babies in the Word. They're still babies in the Lord. They've been getting the milk to make them feel good and to keep them coming and to keep them where we want them to be. We're not getting the whole truth of God. We're not getting the whole picture of God. We're not seeing things the way that God wants us to see them. We are in that place where there is no vision. People perish. And there are people, as I said, that are sitting in our pews today that are like that. And they are perishing. They don't even realize it. They don't even recognize it. But because they're not getting the big picture, because they're not seeing it the way that God has said it, they are perishing. We have convinced ourselves that I, I go to the altar. I say my sinner's prayer. I get up. I go home. I say my prayers every day. I read my Bible once in a while and everything's good. That's not what the Word says. God has a job for us to do. God has a, a goal for us to strive for. As Christians, we are to be ever growing. We are to be ever strengthening. We are to be ever pursuing the truth of God. But we're not doing that. We're comfortable. We got in this little niche. We've convinced ourselves this is okay and this is all right and I'm going to be good. And that's where we stay. That is not what God has called us to. We have lost the vision. We are not getting it the way that God is presenting it. We are seeing it how we want to see it. We are seeing it how the denomination wants to see it. How the Bible school wants to see it. How the seminary wants to see it. We need to begin to see it how God wants us to see it. I believe that many churches, the majority of churches, have gotten so far away from this word that a lot of people sitting in the pews don't even realize what it is that God is saying anymore. They don't realize what it is that God has called them to anymore. They are being called to what the pastor says or the denomination said. It's time that we get our vision cleared up. We need some corrective surgery. We need to get our sight fixed on God and on the word of God, the true word of God. I saw something the other day on the internet, a young minister, a young pastor. He pastors a church, a pretty big congregation, and he put on uh, Facebook, I think it was, that he was preparing for a sermon, and he had a picture of what he had there to prepare for the sermon. There was a stack of books like that. I think there were six or seven books that he was using to prepare for this sermon. This book was not among them. Amen. This is what will correct your vision. Amen. This is what will enable you to see right. This is what will tell you what God wants you to see. Amen. That will show you what God wants to show you. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 12, and in verse 2 he says, and this applies to us. He says, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. God, as I already said, there's church after church after church. There, there's TV show after TV show, religious programming, stations and networks that are dedicated just to religious programming. But we are not seeing the truth of God. We have eyes to see, but we see not. We have been blinded by the God of this world. We have been blinded by denomination. We have been blinded by religiosity. It's time to get our vision corrected. It's time to get that corrective surgery. It's time to get back to what God really said. I was talking to Carla yesterday. I think I have to do this. And I've been working on this. And I think a lot of us need to do this. Sometimes you just need to erase everything somebody else told you and let God speak to you. Let God speak truth to you. It's so easy to get in your head all these thoughts and all these ideas because you've always heard them. We need to put those aside and listen to the Holy Spirit of God and let Him show us the big picture. Let Him teach us. Let Him guide us. Let Him direct us. Let God be true and every man a liar. And let's lay all that down and listen to what it is that God has to say. In Jeremiah 14, 14, he says, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. They prophesy a false vision. It, 
what did I read there to start with? Without a vision, the people perish. And what's he talking about? The law of God, the word of God, the commandments of God, the direction of God. And he said here that what they're telling us is a false vision. We're just seeing what we want to see. We're seeing what they want us to see. We don't have the vision of God. We need to get the vision of God. I'm going to say this again. I already said it. But you go back and you read what Jesus said. Having eyes to see, they see not. And there's so many of us in that shape. We just see what's right here. We just see what somebody has spoon fed on. We need to begin to see what it is that God has to say. We need to listen to the word of the Lord and be directed by that and have our vision focused by that. And you can go back and you can read what Paul wrote. You can read what Peter wrote. You can read what Jude wrote. He said there would come a day when they would heap unto themselves false preachers and false teachers and they would believe a lie. They would be taught these false doctrines and that would give them their vision. That would be what they're focused on. That would be what they're directed at. And that's where we are at today. And and it's a sad state of the church in this country. It is terrible. It's awful. The condition that we're in. And so many are sitting in the pews this morning believing that everything is okay because I'm doing what the man up there told me to do. I'm living the way the man up there said it was alright to live. Well, the man up there ain't the one you're going to stand for. They ain't the one you're going to be in front of come judgment day. You better start listening to what it is God has to say. You better start listening to what it, that Holy Spirit Spirit has to say. I talked about this here before. Maybe you heard me. But Paul mentioned a group of people called the Bereans one time. He said they were an honorable people. Because after they listened to Paul preach, they went and checked the scriptures and made sure that what he said was true. And made sure that what he said was right. And that's what we need to be doing. We quit right. following everything that's said and quit swallowing everything that's said without checking it out for ourselves. Without having the Holy Spirit confirm it to us without making sure it is the word of God. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. <coughs> Probably don't know who Samuel was. Samuel's mom couldn't have any kids. So she prayed to the Lord and she asked for a child and she told the Lord that if uh, she would be given this child that she would dedicate him to God, that she would give him back to God. So God gave her a son, and she took him to the temple and dedicated him to God and gave him to God, and he dwelled in the temple from that point forward. And that's who we're going to read about here a little bit this morning. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. We're going to stop reading right there. I, I want to uh, clarify a few things for you, and then we'll move on with it. I already told you who Samuel was. It talks about Eli in here, too. Eli was the high priest. Eli was the, the religious leader in Israel at this time, and his sons were priests, but his sons were doing things that they are not to be doing. His sons were dealing with the people falsely. Uh, they were getting money from them and allowing them to do all kinds of things that they are not to be doing, and Eli did didn't do anything about it. And that's who we have in this end. What the Bible says here is, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. I want to stop just a minute. When it says the word of the Lord was precious, it meant that it was valuable, that it was something to be desired. It was something that we were, we think of precious like gold or diamonds or something like that. And that's that word of the Lord was precious in those days. I really want you to understand this before we move on. 
The word of the Lord was there. The word of the Lord was available. The, the word of the Lord was in that place. But he's saying that it was precious because they couldn't get their hands on it because Eli and his sons who were in charge of the religious system were not giving him the word of the Lord. As I already told you, his sons were dealing with the people falsely and they were treating the people falsely. They were giving them a false doctrine, so to speak. They were not telling them the truth. So the word of the Lord was precious in those days. And just like I said, we use diamonds or gold or something like that as precious because we want it because it's of value to us. It becomes a precious thing. There's a lot of gold out there. There's a lot of diamonds out there. But I don't have them here, and it would be precious to me to get a hold of them, and that's the condition they were in. The word was there, but they didn't have it here. It was something they should have valued, and something they should have sought after, and they didn't do that. It goes on and says it was precious in those days. There was no open vision. They were not seeing what the Lord wanted them to see. They were not hearing what the Lord wanted them to hear. They were being given a false doctrine. They were being given a false doctrine, and they were being given a, a false teaching and given the, not the truth of God. And again, that's exactly where we are at today. This was Eli, the high priest, his sons who were the priests, the religious system, the religious teacher, the religious preacher were giving them false doctrine. And that's where we're at today. That's exactly what's going on today. Well, our religious leaders, the big names, the people who are supposed to be in charge are not giving us the truth of God. The word of God is precious because that as I already read you, I believe we're in that time where there's a famine for the true word of God, the honest, unadulterated, 100% pure word of God. There's a famine for it. As I already said, with church after church after church, you go out there and you go from church to church to church, and you see how many of them give you the truth. You see how many of them give you the pure word of God. It is a precious thing, and we're losing it. It's going away, and we are getting a false doctrine and we are getting false teaching and just like they did here and it says and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see that's where our religious system is at it's their eyes have waxed dim they are becoming blind they can't see the truth just like Eli he was the high priest his sons were priests they were doing wrong what did Eli do about it nothing his eyes had waxed dim. He couldn't see what needed to be done. He couldn't see the truth. There was no vision. There was no open vision. But without a vision, people perished. If you go read on from where I read here, what happened to the children of Israel? They perished. They were taken over by other countries. They were defeated in battle. They had to go through all kinds of things because there was no open vision. The people perished. That's where this country is at. That's where the church in this country is at. There is no open vision. The precious word of the Lord is not going forth, and we are perishing. The, the eyes of the religious system, the eyes of the religious leaders have grown dim. They're at a point where they can barely see the truth anymore. He goes on and he says, His eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. Before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. What was the ark of God? That was his covenant. That was his promise. That was his law. That was his mercy. Oh, in that covenant. That's what was in the house of God there. That's what was in there. And that's what God has in place in our trust. God has given us his promises. God has given us his mercy. God has given us his law. And we are in trust to win it, but listen to this. But the air of the lamp of God went out. It was ready to go out. The light was ready to go out of the house of God. It was ready to grow dark and we are that close to that in this country today. The light of God is getting ready to go out of our churches. That the churches that have been entrusted with the covenant of God. We have been entrusted with that and it is our duty. It is our responsibility. It should be our honor and our privilege and our pleasure to shine that light of God into a lost and dying world, but we're at the same point that they were at here. The religious system has failed, and they're not doing anything about it, and the light is getting ready to go out. 
if you could see spiritually speaking across this country today, I think we've got just a flickering flame left. I think it's just about ready to go out. There's not too much truth going forward anymore. There's not too much of the true word of God going out anymore. It is all the false doctrine that it's ready to go out. And what did it say here? Just before the lamp of God went out in the temple of God, verse 4, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. What did I tell you about Samuel? His mom dedicated him to God. Amen. She gave him to God. This was now God's child. That's who Samuel was. And I really want you to get this. If you have been born again, you, you are God's child, just like Samuel was. You are set apart. You belong to him. You are his. You are to be as Samuel was, dedicated to God. You know, Samuel did not leave the temple. He lived in the temple. He lived in the presence of God. Every day of his life, he lived in the presence of God. That is how we are supposed to be as children of God. Those that have dedicated ourselves to God. That has given ourselves to God. We are to live in the presence of God. That's the kind of people that we are to be. That's the kind of person that Samuel was. Now listen. When the light was ready to go out, when it was almost too late, the high priest and the priests were teaching falsely. They weren't taking care of the word of God. The light was not going forth. When it was just about too late, when it was almost gone out, the Lord called Samuel, a person dedicated to God, a person committed to God, a person who gave himself to God, a person who belonged to God. He called Samuel, and he's calling you today. If you have committed yourself to him, if you have dedicated yourself to him, if you are his child, if you are living in his presence, just like Samuel was, he's calling you today, just like he called Samuel, to go out and to speak the word of God. That's what you're being called to. That is what you're being called for. That is your job here in this life. That is your job here on this earth. What did Samuel say when he said, the Lord called Samuel and he answered, not now, I'm busy. It's not what he said. Here am I. That's what God wants to hear from you. When he's calling you, he wants to hear your answer. Here am I. But so many of us, our answer is, not right now, I'm too busy, I'll get to it later. I got something else I got to do, I'll get to it later. I'm not trained to do that. I'm not called to do that. That's not my talent. That's not my gift. If God called you to do something, God will equip you to do that thing that he has called you to do. If you are a child of God, he has already called you to be a witness to him, to be an ambassador for him. He's calling, but nobody's answering. He's calling, but we're not saying, here am I. There's another scripture where an old prophet was. He said, here am I. Send me. That should be what we say. That should be our desire. That's what we should be doing. And I believe from the bottom of my heart that we are in a condition just like this. The flyer is ready to go out. It's flickering and it's almost gone because we're sitting in the temple and we're not going forth when God calls. But God is calling you. If you are his child, if you are dedicated to him like Samuel was, he is calling and he's waiting to hear you answer. Here am I. He needs someone who will go forth. You read on from here what Samuel did. He was greatly used of God as a judge over Israel. As one who delivered the message of God to Israel. And he's calling the people today to deliver his message to the United States of America. To deliver his message to your town. To your neighborhood. To your family. To your workplace. To your friends. Wherever he has placed you. He's calling you to deliver that message. Are you going to deliver it? Are you going to say, here am I? Are you going to be like the religious system? Are you going to be like Eli? Are you sight just growing dim and you're just going to lay down and let the light go out? It's up to you. God is calling you, but you have got to answer the call. Amen. If you read on here, Eli and his sons met up with a bad faith. And that's what's going to happen to those of us. 
who claim to be the children of God, who profess to be the children of God and don't do the will of God, that don't have the vision of God, that don't have that vision that he wants us to have, not the vision that the church wants us to have, not the vision that the denomination wants us to have, the vision that God wants us to have. And what is God's vision? His vision is to see the lost brought in. His vision is that none should perish. His vision is that his children should lift him up, that his children should be a light into a dark and a dying world, that his children should be the one who can go out and proclaim him, and that his children should be strengthened and encouraged and emboldened and do the thing that Samuel did. That's the vision that we need to get a hold of. If we don't get that vision, people will perish. People are perishing and all over this land, all over this country. I venture to say in every family sitting here, you have lost loved ones who are perishing because they don't have the vision. They don't have the vision because we don't have the vision. They can't get the vision unless we give them the vision. We can't give them the vision unless we get a hold of the vision. We need to get a hold of it because without vision, people perish. As I said, they're perishing out there. But you know what's even sadder? They're perishing in here. They're sitting in the pews and perishing because they don't have a hold of the vision of God. They need to get the vision of God. As I already said, we've got a vision, but it's not the vision of God. Our vision is that if I just do my responsibility, if I just do certain duties, I'm all right. That's not what the Word of God said. I preached last Sunday night on what James said. If any man be a hearer of the Word and not a doer of the work, he deceiveth himself, and he shall lose even that that he seemeth to have. And there's a lot of us in that shape. There's a lot of us sitting in the pews today around this country, around this community, maybe here sitting in the pews today, that we are hearers of the word, but we're not doers of the work. And the Bible says, if we are hearers and not doers of the work, we have deceived ourselves, and we are going to lose even what we think we have. That's not my word, that's the word of God. There's a lot of us that think we got it made, they think we got it sewed up, that we got it all together, and everything's fine and everything's hunky-dory. Well, we may just be deceiving ourselves. According to the word of God, there are things that we are to be doing, that we are to be about the Father's business. We are to be a witness. We are to be a testimony. We are to go into all the world and preach the gospel so that they can get the vision. But it's got to start here. We have got to get the vision first. We have got to get the vision of God. The vision that God wants us to have. He wants us to see the way that he saw. What did he see when he looked out over this world? He saw lost and dying souls. That's why Christ came to save the lost and the dying soul. That was his vision. That was his purpose. That's what he saw and that's what he did. He worked to do what would be best for them and that's the vision that we need to get. We need to see the lost and the dying. We we need to see the work that needs to be done and we need to get about the Father's business. Yeah. Right. Starting off with this, and I'm going to end with this. Without a vision, the people perish. And as I said there in Samuel, there was no open vision. The lamp of the Lord was ready to go out. We're at that place. I'm going to ask you to ask yourself, you, you think about this, you pray about this. Do you have the vision? Do you have this vision? Or do you have the vision of the denomination? Or, or the division of the big name preacher? Or, or of the Bible school or, or of something else? This is the vision that we've got to get. This is what we have got to see. There's more to this thing than being a good little boy or girl. There's more to this thing than showing up at church once in a while. There's more to this thing than putting your money in the offering plate. We have a work to do. We are called to a work. Are we doing that work? Or do we have that, that narrow vision that just says, I'm going to do just what i got to do so that I get by. That vision is about more than me. 
And it's about more than you. It's about what Christ came for. When Christ went back, he passed that duty and that responsibility to his children to spread the gospel, to preach the word, to reach the lost. But the church has lost the vision. The church has become narrow sighted. We have like a, a peephole sight just on what do I have to do to get through? What do I have to do to make sure I'm all right? That's where a lot of our focus is at. The Bible says you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. When these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, if you love God the way that you're supposed to love God, you're going to serve God the way that you're supposed to serve God. And then you will love your neighbor as yourself, and you will serve them as Christ served them. That's the fulfilling of the law. That's the vision that we need to have. That is what we are being called to. We've been entrusted with the things of God. We've been entrusted with the message of God. We've been entrusted with salvation. You know, when, when Christ said to Peter, on this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Those keys were passed to his children. The key that opens the door to heaven is the word of God. And we've been entrusted with that. To go out and to open the door to all those who are lost. To all those who are on the outside. To all those who are dying. To all those who are hurting. We have the keys. And we're supposed to go forward and open the door unto them. That is our job. That is our duty. That is our responsibility. If we're not doing that based on the word of God, then we are not doing what God has called us to do. And we may well be in danger, just like Eli and his sons, the priests, were in danger. Yeah, they were priests. They were religious people. They were the higher-ups in the religious system. But they met a terrible fate. They met a terrible end because their vision was other than what God's vision was. I'm going to stop there. That's all that I have. But I'm going to ask you, examine yourselves, meditate on it, pray about it. Ask God as David did, Lord, reveal to me what it is that dwells within me. And ask God to show you, do I have your vision? Am I seeing what you want me to see? Are my sights set where you want them to be set? Or are they just set on getting by? Are they just set on going through the motions? Fulfilling my duty, fulfilling my obligations, and being all right. Where are we really? Let's pray. <coughs> Father, I thank you, God, once again, for the privilege you've given us, Lord, to stand in the middle of your word. Lord, I thank you for this message, Lord, that you've given us this morning. And I pray, Father, that you would help each and every one of us, God, to examine ourselves. Lord, to look deep inside and know, God, whether or not our vision is focused where you would have it to be focused. And I pray, Lord, that if we find that it's not, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to do those things that are needed to correct that vision. Help us, Lord, to be your light, to be your witnesses, Lord, to go forth into this lost and dying world, Lord, and present you to those who are in most need. I pray, Lord, as we go from this place, Lord, that you would be with each and every one. Find this word in the hearts of those who are sitting here, Lord, and feed them what they need from them. In Jesus' name,